Hey everyone, in this lesson, we're going to cover some of the basics related to database privacy roles within your application. So the, if you want to deploy your application for the first time and you didn't build out any sort of database privacy roles, you'd probably see a privacy warning that looks a little something like this. And at first it may seem a little bit like, what exactly does this error message mean? Uh, but it's really straightforward once you start thinking about it. So in terms of privacy of your application, how you restrict the visibility of information is defined largely in three different ways. It's first, whether you choose to represent that information within a visual way within your application. So, you know, are you drawing inputs on the page that reference specific points in the database? Second, you have permissions within the page that either may redirect a user. So say they try to access a profile page, but that's only accessible to certain types of users. You have a redirect to say it's when the current user isn't logged in, they get filtered back over to the home page. Or most importantly, when you're designing applications, it's setting up roles at the database level to say under what conditions can certain information be accessed. So in terms of building privacy in your application, it's a matter of doing all different types of things to make sure that you're building something that's very secure. But one of the really best things that you can do, but it, that's often the most overlooked, is to build out really good, solid database privacy rules. So for the sake of this tutorial, what I'm going to do is to introduce this to you using an application that I've already built. So let's go ahead and uh, go over there now. And the application that we're going to use is a tool called Work Maps. So you may have uh, come across this as an example that I've used in some other tutorial videos, but just as a quick refresher, Work Maps is a tool for HR teams and small companies to be able to understand the commutes of their employees. So whether uh, they want to understand if their employees have long commutes, if they want to embrace certain alternatives, different things like that, it's a very effective tool. So Part of when I was designing this application, I wanted to ensure that as HR users are uploading their own employee data to the system, that that data isn't accessible to a different person who creates an account on the platform. So I created a, a variety of different roles to be able to do that. So in terms of setting up those database privacy roles, we do that by going to the data tab and clicking on the privacy tab specifically. So when we're clicked on the privacy tab, you'll notice that it gives us a list of all of our data types in the system. And this is a exact one for one match of everything that's on the data types tab here. So if we're thinking about our application at a very base level, uh, the user uh, table is always there in every application. So one of the primary places where you can start developing this is from your user type table. Now, in the case of this application, it's still fairly non-complex in terms of what it's doing. I have two primary user types that are using the application. So that of an admin that may be managing accounts on the system, cleaning up data, doing things of that nature, and is a trusted person that has access to information in a global sense. And then there's the role that I created called viewer, and that's the actual user in the system. Uh, and I want to enable them with a couple of different permissions there. So one of the things to make note of here is that by default, every application will always have the user table. So, uh, but when you're originally setting things up in your application, so let's say I'm going to an application where I haven't done anything at all. Let's hop back over to the sandbox application that I just created, see what the privacy table looks like there. So. Notice I have that user table. I haven't done anything else building this out, but notice it says this type is visible by everyone. You can create a role if you want to restrict access. So what this means is that all data within Bubble is automatically visible by default. So unless you define a new role within your application, all of your data is going to be visible. But thankfully, recently, Bubble introduced a setting that changed this so that if you wanted to, you could have all new things that you create 
are uh, not visible by default, but rather you need to create roles that match that style. So let's go ahead and see what happens we, when we hit define new role here. So when we hit define new role, this is effectively creating a, a lock and key system where different types of keys enable opening the same door. So I can create a role for admin, I can create a role for a basic user, but the thing is you have to remember with this key is that it only opens the door in certain ways. So it may only give access to part of the data or it may give access to all of the data or it may give access to data to a certain user only when certain conditions are met. So let's just say that I wanna create the role of current user here. So, uh, I can create a role that says, when this user is current user, this data is visible. So, but what exactly do, do I mean by current user is this user? And well, so the way it's defined is whenever you're building an expression here, current user is referring to the current user that's using the system and the way in which they're accessing that data. So when I'd say when current user is, this user, they're able to see all of this information. So uh, in this case, the current user would be able to see all of the information that relates to themselves. But notice I still have all of these checkboxes down here at the bottom checked. So if I want this privacy role to actually have any value, I would want to uncheck those because that's effectively overriding everything because this says everyone else would essentially have the same permissions that I do there. So, but in this case, let's say if I wanted to create a role where this user could only see certain information about other people, then I would need to build out that role. So I would define a new role to say when current user, um, we'll call this just uh, logged in user. So we'll say when current user is logged in, they can see, they can view all fields associated with a different user. But let's say that I want to build out a couple more fields here to say, you know, first name and last name, but I don't want to show like a home address or something like that. So say if we had a directory type of tool and unless they've actually provided some level of access to that, then uh, they wouldn't be able to see that information. Now, and as we hop back over to the work maps uh, application, some of these concepts will make a little bit more sense. So uh, let's go ahead and hop back over there. Now, within our work maps application, because we have a little bit more of a data, uh, database structure here, there's a little bit more that we can do. So you'll notice I created my admin role here, which says when the current user's role is admin is yes then these types of things are possible. And the way that I constructed that role was very simple. So on the user table, I added a Boolean field here for yes, no. And uh, for all users, when their accounts are created, it's gonna default to false. But for users that I create to admin, I flip that tag to yes. So uh, on my privacy table here, uh, it'll look and say when the current users is admin is yes, it's going to give them access to everything in the system. So it's going to give them the ability to view all fields, um, to find in searches. Uh, so to actually search for these different data types within, within the system, and then as well to view all fields. So now beyond this, I have the role of viewer. And viewer is essentially my role of that HR person who's coming into the system and is looking for uh, to find out more about their own organization. So for that viewer, when they log in, they'll be able to view only their information. So it's uh, when this user, this user is current user, they'll be able to view all fields. Uh, they'll be able to find this in searches and they'll be able to view all attached files. But the important thing here to remember is this only relates to the viewer role as it relates to user. So they're only seeing the information about their own user profile. So it's effectively saying when the user profile that's being viewed is that of the current user, they're able to see all of this information. 
but let's go ahead and think about that actual data within the system. So uh, in terms of a user that's using this platform, they're going to upload their, uh, their own data and they're going to create a company profile. And so that's created uh, by what are called companies and data points here. So you'll notice that I have some fairly similar roles to what I had before. So the admin has ability to view everything and it's still using that flag from the user's profile, but it's defining data as it relates to company. So the same thing for our end user here, that HR person, it's when they're logging in, they see when this company, so the company that they're looking at is created by the current user, so when the creator of the company is the current user, they have the ability to view all fields. And, you know, since they're just viewing a one-to-one -one object, it's okay for find this searches to be checked, but it doesn't really make too much of a difference here. And then as well to view attached files. Now within this, I provide a couple of different cases where I allow them to do auto binding. So uh, in terms of their company location and their company name and data points, uh, so there are certain things where I do want them to be able to change that easily, but for other things, I don't want to enable auto binding. Um, so I just leave those unchecked. Now you'll notice I have view all fields checked here. Oh, and I'm in the live version, so it's not actually going to let me make live changes here, but for the view all fields, say if I had a certain field here that I wanted to make sure that my end user didn't have the ability for that data point to inadvertently slip through, uh, I could leave that unchecked here so they could see everything but that given field. So within this, I'm going to go through all of my tables and as well, uh, so go through my data points and things that relate to that user. And I'm going to define under what uh, what roles and permissions this information should be able to be accessed. So uh, that way I'm restricting the level through which my information can be accessed. And defining these roles in very good concrete ways is very important to do. Now you'll notice within the expression builder for these, it's when, I, when I'm working with actual structured things, I can get a little bit more complex than when the creator is the current user or when the current user is logged in uh, that information is accessible. Like if I wanted to do something that's a little bit more complex, and again, because we're in the live uh, mode, it might not let us actually reflect this in reality, but I could say it's uh, when the current user is opted in, uh, then we're going to give access to the data in this type of way or do something in a little bit more of a structured form. So, but in terms of for other tables within my application, you know, that data may be very low level in terms of what it actually means for uh, access. Like I have FAQs within the system and the FAQs themselves are visible as part of the external site. So I don't really feel the need to define any sort of privacy rules around that. So in that case, I was fine not defining any rules associated with that. So uh, for throughout your application, it's really good to do an audit to see these are the things where it is important. And these are the things where, you know, I may be able to say a database role isn't required, but as you're building out these types of roles, it's important to keep the number of roles that you have to a minimum, but make sure that they're structured so that they only let data through when it's absolutely necessary. Because if you have roles that are too wide, then you may inadvertently give data to people uh, who shouldn't get access to that information. Uh, and uh, your database roles will only more or less be there for show. So I recommend, you know, you take a very incremental approach to your database privacy roles and build them in such a way where you're able to test them and see, are they working? Now, one last point as it relates to building out these privacy roles, it's that as you're building these out, it can cause a lot of havoc for your application because you 
you were used to the circumstance where all of your data flowed freely throughout your application before, but now you're encountering situations where that data isn't actually showing. And because a privacy role didn't actually give you the, the right credentials in which to access that information. So it's important as you encounter new bugs, as you're building out privacy roles to kind of think through and saying, maybe it's not actually an issue in your application, but it's about how your application itself is restricting access to that information. So if you have questions about this, please feel free to reach out uh, as well. I welcome your comments on this lesson, but otherwise uh, the final takeaway here is building out privacy roles is one of the most important things that you can do to safeguard the data and information that you have in your system. All right, happy building.